Hello avocado fans, this is Gregory and uh, I wanted to share with you some things I've used to help me grow my avocados and uh, I noticed that online a lot of people will show several products for growing their trees and I wanted to share my experience because I don't use a lot of product. If I do, it's these four plus um, azomite rock dust, worm castings and I'll, I'll add pumice to the ground and I got several worms in the ground but I don't use a lot of product because I've seen avocado trees thrive and live in the Bay Area on people's front lawns just planted right in the middle just getting sprinkler water doing very well uh, especially once they were established so with that if I do use fertilizer which I'm starting to use more because the land I'm on was a peach orchard so I'm not sure um, how the soil was treated. So I decided I'm gonna help my trees along because uh, cherries, for example, and citrus, I found that they do need fertilizer, unlike figs and pomegranates, which will do fine without it. So I add this to my fruit trees, Dr. Earth's Natural Wonder, organic and natural free true fertilizer. It does the job, works well, 552 is the NPK. If I feel like that's not enough and I want to step it up for my avocados that is, then I'll add this one. I'll give it some Lily Miller and uh, this is the acid loving fertilizer and um, this is uh, also contains micronutrients so as NPK but also contains things like calcium, boron, other things you need in your soil. This one does the trick every time. If you feel like your trees, your avocados aren't happy, then I would try this one. If uh, you feel like nothing else is working. This one is made in a factory though. So it's a slow releasing. This one is completely organic. I once left the bag open, insects and bugs got in and started eating it. For sunscreen, which you need out here, especially in Northern California, you get extreme heat. Unfortunately, I guess that's everywhere now is I use the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. I don't use paint. I found paint. Some of my trees did not like the paint and water whitewash mix. So I'm not doing that anymore. For my pots and in the ground, I use the Palm Cactus and Citrix Kellogg's mix. And uh, let me show you how that's working out. I like this one because it has lots of black sand, lots of pumice, so it's well draining, retains the moisture with the pumice, that is, and does the job. Here I got four varieties. These were tiny when I got them. I got two queens on the left, Edrenol in the middle, you can see popping up top, and you can see the big, nice, green, shiny leaves, and that's in a ball. And uh, you can see that's pretty much the mix there in a pot. The main thing I want to go over though, now that we've got product out of the way, is watering. Watering for avocados is number one. Just like these beautiful banana trees. You can see the, the water in the ground is what's keeping them happy. That's really number one for tropical fruit is water is everything water is life as they say and I'm going to show you what happens when you don't keep an eye on the watering and give these avocado trees the love that they desire so we had in the summer it was hitting 116 113 I was watering every day I water every day above 90 and then I started watering every two days as it's cooled down and then every three days and this one didn't make it. It did not like my schedule. This right here, Carmen Hass tree, covered in Ivy Organics, but it's completely dark. It's gone completely black. And uh, I show you this because this is what happens when you grow avocados. All of a sudden, you could have one bad day and they'll just die. So it's something to expect and prepare for. In fact, sometimes 
If I see an extremely rare variety, I'll buy two of them to be sure I have backup. And uh, usually, I just end up uh, selling or giving one of them away. And um, it's just something to keep in mind. If you get a hold of a rare variety, you've been spending years finding. Maybe get two. Um, here's a rare variety, speaking of which. This is the Julia avocado. You can see there, the tag. And it's a nice, beautiful tree. It's extremely rare. It took me years to find this one. And when I finally did, I jumped on it because I'm not even sure this has been released to the general public. So it was probably meant for a commercial grower, but um, someone got a hold of it and uh, sold it to me. Uh, speaking of which, this one I got, I found online on the internet after my other Carmen Haas died. Uh, thanks, Zabir. I'm going to grow this one to replace the one that just died. And this is the Carmen Haas avocado. And this is an extremely productive uh, Guatemalan variety. But the tree doesn't get too big. Like this one. Which is the next thing I want to go over is the growth habit. This is a lamb. Lamb Haas avocado tree. And I see a fruit right there. Let me see if I can get it. There it is. You can see it. There are a couple others. It's a dense tree, which is probably what might be what helps keep it small. There's some more there. I think it's on there. And um, what happens with these trees is uh, it's, they stay pretty compact. Like this one here. This is the Zutano, um, excuse me, not Zutano, the Pinkerton. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. See, again, stays about 12 feet. I trim it maybe once every two or three years. Not much. This one is a great one. Seems to adjust very well. You can see, let me show you the fruit. And there we go. And I'll be ready in about a, another, uh, another six months to a year. There's another one here. There we go. And this is a very productive variety, which is another topic I want to cover. You do want varieties that are extremely productive because avocados are a lot of work. So why do all that work and have to go to the store and buy avocados constantly? Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about it was, was uh, this one being in the shade. So one, I was talking about the growth habit. So these all fit here. You can see they're going to get about 12 feet. I'm going to keep my 12 feet. And they're not going to require a lot of pruning. I had a reed in there in the middle, but it was getting 20 feet and it was going to start damaging the roots if I didn't keep cutting it a couple of times a year. So I finally accepted and embraced my fate and realized it was not the right tree for that spot. So I made a change and uh, I dug it up and I planted it somewhere else. And um, hopefully it comes back. If not, the Julia will take its place. Um, so the growth habit is important. Also understanding that you can grow avocados in partial shade. When I started growing, everyone was talking about, um, all the literature I was reading that is, was talking about growing them in full sun. And uh, that's great if you're a commercial orchard, you're running a business, you have a thousand trees, but with the yards we have these days, you got to take what you can get. So these are in partial shade. And to be honest, what I want to say is I think that's an advantage because these here are protected by the extreme heat of the summers. Uh, let me show you a productive variety that I wanted to include because uh, this one is uh, the gem and it's a true gem. It hasn't been in the ground, hadn't been in the ground six months and it had like 50 fruitlets. Of course, I removed them because you could see it's not ready. Uh, this does well in high heat, which is why I'm mentioning it. This one also does well in high heat. This is a Jim Bacon. And um, this is thriving. Again, it was 116. No problem with these trees. It also has a Grande Negra graft, from, which is a local variety. Here's another local variety we have. These are local non-commercial varieties that we grow up here. This is a La Mirinda, which is a Haas 
Fuerte Cross. Tree looks like Haas, fruit looks like Haas, but it tastes exactly like Fuerte. So that's the main things I wanted to cover. Hope these are helpful for you. Um, perhaps one day we'll be able to share notes. You can leave your comments in the comment section and maybe we'll be able to trade fruit. I'm grafting, starting to graft more and more of these varieties here. And so uh, maybe someday we'll even be able to exchange trees. All right. Thanks for watching.